and and then you have had this i core pot uh, i don't know how do you pronounce the name could you tell more yes. about this application you have been using yes yes well i core pot um well, it's a sensor that we are using for uh, to quantify the workload. So we realize in explosive exports, explosive repetitive exports, and also indoor exports, uh, there's no uh, reliable system of quantification, right? Mm. And and wh why why is that? Well, it's it's because probably the big companies are not investing uh, in in this because it's it's complicated and and also. The system that already exists in the market has less flexibility. They have their own calculations, so you have to rely on their calculations. So, but we wanted something different. We, we wanted to first to collect all data. And we wanted a device that uh, do not interact with training procedures, right? Mm. If you are going to implement some technology, uh, in athletes, uh, first, um, it's difficult because probably it's uncomfortable. Um, then they have to take care about, you know, charging the battery or download the data. And, and after a really hard workout, athlete doesn't feel like that, mm. right? So you waste a lot of, lot of, uh, data information. So we, tr we knew what we wanted which is a system uh, that can transfer automatically the data, that it's very uh, lightweight, only 13 grams, which do not interact with training procedure, that you don't have to turn on and off uh, because you maybe forget. And and all these kind of facilities are very important if you want to implement something in, mm. in high elite athletes, right? So we, we found a company and we start collaborating uh, we made some tests and then from there we developed which is the most important our own algorithm hmm. so it took us almost i think more than a year to develop the algorithm hmm. and 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 i think that's what makes the, the difference uh, uh compared to other devices in the market Mm. So, so basically, you measuring three axial acceleration, and then you mm -hmm. analyze wh where do you wear the device. Well, you wear the device um, very close to your uh, body gravity center, which is mm. which is um, in in the at the back of the pants, very close to uh, sacral, mm. and and and. Why, why here? Because if you are moving your body, then we know uh, your body is accelerating. If you wear the device in a leg or in a wrist or in a, in a arm or something like that, the information is completely different. You can be moving your arm or your leg, but not moving your body, hmm. right? So we make, we make sure that the acceleration came from both, both legs, at least, at least. And, and 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 the movement is strong enough uh, to be quantified yeah so so you have it on the on the back and you can kind of follow the the movement of the mass or the acceleration of the body what what is your algorithm analyzing there what kind of things you probably look the maximum acceleration amount amount of accelerations in certain time and maybe the overall load could you could you explain explain more about those? yes yes so i i um i checked the um studies uh, in which uh, the acceler accelerometers are being used for to quantify the workload and i i saw that the all the studies and and i, I thought it, it was it was not possible right uh, um, sometimes the system you're using for, to quantify is, is not reliable because it's not telling you anything about, is it really relevant physiologically, right? So, so usually what, what the rest of companies are doing is just, they just measure the vector of the three axes. They zoom all along the workout and then get a final data, which is the workload. Mm -hmm. But actually has, that has a lot of limitations. For example, let's say uh, we're very involved in, in, in badminton. So 
let's say a badminton player is walking on the court and wearing the icor pod, wearing the sensor. It's resistant accelerations, yes, it's registering, but those accelerations are relevant physiologically to be quantified as workload. Actually, I think I think it's, it's not okay. So what we wanted in the algorithm was to um, identify those exercise or effort that have certain uh, intensity to be quantified, and it's what we what we did. So basically the algorithm um, start to register and identify uh, the time of the effort and then gives you information about that effort. For example, intensity, duration, uh, resting, um, density, and so on. So, so we collect those events of efforts and then we can classify in high, medium, or low intensity and provide uh, um, much more accurate information. Mm -hmm. And and from the kind of training science, we know that the super hard uh, performances are causing a lot of neuromuscular fatigue. Like if we think of of a weightlifter, they, they do like one snatch and yes. that's quite quite a lot already, like just yeah. one lift. So how do you how do you classify in for example in badminton I guess the the hardest jumps and and the the accumulation of really hard jumps or stops or change of directions are the ones which create neuromuscular fatigue and provide the training stimulus but but also require a lot of re recovery time so how do you what how, how do you define the the high end and what do you conclude from those yes so if you track all the events you you know what are the uh, maximum accelerations so if you have some some kind of neuromuscular fatigue probably you will not accelerate as much as possible because your 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 nervous system is, is cutting you right you, your fatigue you cannot develop uh, more Gs of acceleration. So if you count the uh, highest acceleration from the beginning of the session to the end, you will see a slope going down. And that's normal. But if you start from from uh, very down um, and you finish also in a very, very down, so the inclination of the slope uh, goes uh, more down than expected, then you you have an indicator of, of fatigue. That that's normal, but you can also check in the next morning how did you sleep? Have you sleep enough hours? Because when you are fatigued, you usually have um, some disturbation in the sleeping. Um, how's your questionnaire? How's your heart rate variability? And how are your next session? Mm. And also how is the coaching? Uh, seeing you on court. It's very important the data you are um, supervising matches what, what the coaches see on court. Then when this happens, then you the coaches trust trust you a lot on this monitoring system. So you you can use different systems to analyze if the fatigue is is um, is being suffered properly or, or not. Mm. And and you mentioned badminton as an example. What what other sports you are using this this now? Basically, as as the system as the system is designed, it will work for almost uh, almost every explosive sport. Uh, we also do uh, paddle, uh, which is very famous in Spain. We also do mm. tennis. Uh, we also do handball, for example which is a team sport, um, very explosive movement. We do basketball as well. Soccer, we, we, we can do soccer, but there are a lot of companies already that have the GPS systems. Mm. So, but it's not, it's not that important the way you are measuring something, but the, to give an interpretation of the mm. data. And, and I think this is, this is the most challenging, challenging thing in the next, in the next year. Mm. And and could you tell the practicalities? How are you using the system? For example, if you have a 
I don't know if you have individual badminton players or a team. Do they have a certain amount of of uh, sense sensors, or how how do you how do you do it? How often they measure and and so on? Yes. So yeah, we we track all all accelerations in in all in all athletes in all players in all the sessions mm. in all the workouts. Uh, for instance, if they forget uh, to wear or something, we we have a plan B uh, to to quantify this this workload. So usually, what we do is um, within a center, let's say a high performance center in badminton, you have a lot of kind of players. Some of them are more explosive. Some of them are less. Some of them are are, are um, working harder than others so you get a normality within that group right mm. and within that group you have a range in which then you can place every athlete i mean you can you can advise them um in comparing to the rest of the group what are the highest value in badminton in in an individual match for example you got the data right mm. Am I close to the data? Am I uh, getting better of the data? Yes. Okay, so you can track it and then you can see your your progress. So it's it's important to have resources of data to identify these things. Hmm. Yeah. So so basically you you measure the training sessions and the matches. Mm -hmm. And and you said that it's it's close to the center of the mass. How do the persons attach it? Attach the device, or is it integrated to clothes? Well, uh, the device has a strong clip that you can attach to uh, your pants at the back of the pants. There is an, an elastic and a small rope that you tie to make sure your pants are, uh, are are tied to your body. So we place just. The, the clip of the sensor in between um, between the the, the 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 rope right so mm -hmm. the rope will be in, in the middle the elastic will be also in the middle and and we make sure if they jump or something we ask always if they not if they feel that the sensor is moving but actually it's not it's a very very lightweight so it's very convenient for this purpose mm. and and as you can control the device from the distance do you do you click it from the cloud service that it starts measuring, or do the athletes actually click the it on? Yes, the athletes uh, have the application. So after the training session, they they fill out in iCourse some questions that are already designed before by the coach about, for example, how have been your muscle load, how have been your explosiveness, how how hard has been the session. Mm. And the most important is the training data. Um, okay, what's the time you start and end uh, the the workout session? So so they they save that information and then synchronize the sensor, and and from our application then we download all the raw data. Always we download the raw data in case we want further analysis for a match or a special training session or something like that. And then we analyze everything, and, and and then we 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 give the data to the to the coaches in in their accounts. Mm. So basically, you have objective data which you measure the acceleration, and then analyze with your own algorithms. But you also have some subjective data, and and after the participants or the athletes have filled in this, you can access the data on the cloud, and it's it goes through your algorithms and you analyze something and then you give the feedback to the to the coaches exactly exactly it works like that actually the algorithm ha has some configuration depending on the export and depending how the coaches um the coaches design the session so mm. so um, they also decide what how, how they want to to configure and how they want to get the data so, so I mean, uh, uh, it's a very, very flexible uh, system. Mm. And and how how long you have been using this system, and what have been the experiences with different sports? What have been the comments from athletes? What have been the comments from from the coaches? 
Yeah. So um, we have been using it for one year and a half. We we tried in several in several esports. Um, you also need to notice what's the culture of each sport. Some of some esports, like for example badminton, are excited to monitor their se their sessions. In tennis, for the culture, it's not that much because you also have some kind of technology in tournaments um, and coaches are not get very, very involved on them. But um, the approach of all of all customer are very, very, are very good. Uh, they, they, they want and they were expecting soon something like this. So, so I think um, next applications and systems can can focus on this, as I think, um, as I think the, the monitoring and the implementation of technology in sports is just started. So Jaime, you you have spent one year of developing this algorithm, and you have tested with many many athletes and mm -hmm. and with coaches, and it seems to be working really well and it's an easy system to use mm -hmm. have you been thinking of of licensing this that that other companies other consultants like you could be using it in their in their services yes well actually i think this is the the next step to license our algorithm so what we wanted to do is is just um, to get physiological data uh, from the device, which is not not um, not easy. So, with with common sense in, in analyzing the data, uh, we want to bring this into a machine that is able to read um, the data and 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 and, and give you uh, information about what's what's the real uh, physiological process that is happening into the the player. So and and, and I think that the process of of building the algorithm from the beginning to the end, um, there's a lot of work and, and code and and developers involved and and. Apparently, it's, it's working very, very well for many esports. So, so yeah, um, that's that's the next step to to license our algorithm. So, mm. yeah, the the most of companies are focused and give more information with more sensors, with more data. But we actually want a, a, a simpler way to 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 give information to coaches, which is which is um, giving a sense to that data. Hmm. So basically combining the Fibion Sense small device and the cloud capabilities and your algorithms, you have a system that it's a tiny device. Athletes basically just need to clip it on and you get data from all the training sessions, all the games, and you can, with your algorithm, you can provide insightful and relevant metrics for the coaches that they can adapt the training load to have better performance in the long run. Exactly. This is how, how this is working. And also we, we link some other subjective data with this objective data to get a better, uh, a better understanding about the uh, workload quantification and training procedure of the, of the athletes. Mm. So is it that usually the subjective data is is supporting or the objective data is supporting the subjective or how do you usually see it yes yes always always because for example we can have a really let's say a really hard training session but the the athletes also uh, felt very well and very strong um, and and i think that's important to track it's it's not all only uh, objective um, data we are dealing with uh, uh, human beings uh, and, and that are much more complex than just a, a simple sensor uh, and so for sure we need some information about him we also can have some information about the coach if the coach decide to to input some items but yeah uh, to relate both uh, i think it's important hmm. yeah that's that's interesting um I, I think I have gone most of my my question. Is there mm -hmm. is there anything you would like to like to add into this uh, kind of daily daily monitoring systems and and what you do? 
No, I think I think that I think I had mentioned before. Uh, the most complicated is to is to try to convince the coaches to explaining them um, how how this the sports science knowledge, the exercise knowledge, uh, will help the coaches to make better decisions. Um, it is also important you test everything before and and take into account the practical the practical um, practical things. For example, you can you want to implement a really high training impact. Uh, training on on a season but then you realize you need a lot of equipment you need a lot of um, resources people close to you and and maybe that's not practical right mm. so we actually don't try to make big changes but just a small changes that work for the coaches and for the athletes that can make the difference actually the mm. the difference is in between who is winning a competition and who is losing is, is less than one percent, and I think with this detail we can we can um, improve this this is more different in, in winning the competition. This is the this is the idea. Hmm. And and before we finish, uh, you can freely advertise your your services here and as i understood you are based in madrid but you have customers in, in different places right yes exactly um yeah we we're based in, in madrid but we we move actually a lot we visit a lot of centers uh offering and making some some tests or implementing um different uh uh training techniques that we believe uh it's it's important for them so um, and yeah, we offer some consultations. Uh, we also do some uh, protocols, uh, warm-up protocols, recovery protocols. We apply different techniques. Um, we do testing as well. We create uh, their own testing system depending of the expert and, and the coach or, or what we want to measure or what they want to measure. Um, and we also develop own projects. Uh, uh, customized projects for depending the necessities. So basically, you you have to do something and then start to thinking how you can do it. Check if what you are doing and you are proposing is good or, or, or not, and and, and finally um, give the final service to the customer. So yeah, that's what we do. Yeah, and and you have most of your customers in Spain, but do you have also in in other countries? Yeah, well, more or less now it's 50 50. 50. So, uh, yeah. and actually, uh, we are increasing a lot our quota in, in Europe. And, and I think um, the mentality and, and, and in Europe and the rest of countries are more open minded than, than in Spain. So, mm. so probably we will, we will be more focused into spread our services um, um, in, in Europe than, than in Spain. Mm. So basically, you can do everything from distance. You don't need to always always travel, but you can with the cloud data. You can you can offer also services elsewhere. Yes, we do, we do we do online monitoring, and this is especially important because usually athletes and players uh, travel a lot around the world, and sometimes coaches are not traveling with them, so they can have a a, a monitoring system uh, wherever they they go. So. So yeah, uh, regarding the the application and monitoring um, <clears throat> service, um, we do we do online, but we also want and, and, and like to to know our customers and, and we like to visit centers and we like to visit people. So so to 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 our listeners, I will say that that it's important to make relationships. And more than to mm. sell a product or service, it's, it's, it's more to create a trustable and, and good relationship and, and you will succeed with this. Mm. So do you actually see yourself as part of the coaching team in with the teams you, you're working with? That's, that's, very, that's very important and complicated at the same time. Um, 
usually they coach with their team, you know, they are physical coach, physiotherapist, the player, they are already a group and, 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 and you're a company, right? Out, out, mm. out of them. But if you spend time and, 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 and take care of them and try to help, to help them with, with, with passion, with no rush, with good disposal, I think they they get into the into the group not not as you know as the coach or physical coach but but let's say yeah part of the group a trustable person uh, and that can help them. Mm. So if somebody is interested to check out what your company is offering and maybe maybe even uh, getting getting in touch for, about your services, where do you want to direct them? Yes, they can visit. Uh, 3w.sobrerendimiento.com uh, uh, Sobrerendimiento means overperformance in, in Spanish, so they can check it check it out and, 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 and contact contact us if if they like to uh, request any services or any other kind of reserve project or any other question we will we will help them. Um, um, so. Yeah, not not only we offer services, so we we are interested in in a lot of things. So as we are passionate about our job, uh, we 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 do more things. Mm. Yeah, this has been really nice discussions, and I think valuable information for many people who are thinking of of consulting elite sports. So thank you, mm -hmm. Jaime, for taking time for this podcast. Thank you, Oli, for your invitation, and and yeah, I hope I hope uh, some listeners we can we can help some listeners um, from who have discussed. My pleasure.